All right. So we let me share my screen now. So we've been looking at steps to employment. Steps to employment. How to get a job. Well, this particular steps to employment is applicable anywhere in the world. It's just it's still the same thing. And the syllabus we've been using here has been looking at finding motivation. It's an eight-week course, like you know. Finding motivation. Overcoming obstacles. What are the obstacles that are blocking you from getting a job? How do you overcome those? How do you identify and how do you overcome those obstacles? Then discovering your strengths, knowing the strengths that you have is significant for you to be able to show well in an interview and how to articulate those strengths in an interview. Getting to know employers. Uh, you need to know the way employers think. How do they think? And like I mentioned earlier in previous sessions, getting a job is 80% thoughts, mental frame, and 20% skill set. So how do you think? So when you know the way employers think, you can begin to put yourself and put up the same fine um, head space and think like that and see how to meet the needs of what employers are looking for. And then we look at writing CVs, application part one and two. So then we look at succeeding in interviews, which is what we are on. And like I told you, um, even though succeed, this week such, uh, support is eight weeks, but when we come to succeeding in interviews, I take the privilege to not rush. And I think I've been I've been I spent two months now, two months on succeeding in interviews. Why? Minimum, there are fifteen questions you need to be prepared for before you go for an interview. And each week we'll be taking them one by one. We'll be looking at these sessions, these topics one by one. Last week we we looked at one of them, and today. We're going to again look at another one because the more prepared you are of how to answer interview questions, the better your chances when you uh, when you show up for the interview. Then after when well, we finish all this, we will now go to getting ready for work is the final one. So. We're looking at succeeding in interviews. And we have looked at various topics about this aspect of succeeding in interviews. So, but today, I want to deal specifically with Right. Now, when it comes to attending interview, now why did I even come about this? Um, I want to talk, share this topic today. Somebody went for was supposed to go for an interview, and I was doing a mock interview for him. And I asked a question and he was rambling. You know, he was rambling. His mind, his responses were not coordinated. And I took him through, I told him, and this is why I'm thinking, I've asked this particular topic or this particular question over and over. But you see, I felt that we need to do it again today so that when you're going to be asking, going for an interview, you remember, you remember these things that we have said. When you go for an interview, when they ask you any question, you will mention the fact that 
you don't just begin to talk when you go for an interview. When they ask you any question, the first thing you should ask yourself is, why are they asking me this question? What is the reason for them asking me this particular question? So when you know why they're asking you that question, that helps you to know, okay, how do I respond? Even, and I keep saying this, even if you know the answer to the question, don't just jump at it. Reflect, take time to think, okay, how do I answer this question? How do I answer this question? In a bullet way, in a way that will, and that is why I'm giving you all these frameworks I'm bringing to help you to know how to articulate your thoughts and your response and your answer in a better way. Like you know, I've mentioned earlier, any question you are asked in an interview, you must use the STAR framework. You must use the STAR framework, which is situation, task, action, result, and, and reflection. In other words, where this work, this question you are going to be, this question you want to answer now, or the question they asked you, you must go back into what you've done in time past. How have you done that thing they are asking you before? Telling them, demonstrate, that's how you demonstrate, not just to tell. So you answer the, the question based on what you've done before by, excuse me, by giving a situation, highlighting the task, taking what action did you take? What was the result? And if possibly, what was your learning, your, your takeaway from that, that situation? So I was telling you the story of the person who was supposed to go for an interview and he was rambling and rambling. And I took myself, hey, stop, stop, stop. I said, you have done some things before. Have you not done this work before? He said, yes, he has. Okay, if you've done this work before, then you need to bring all those things you've done before as a means of building your confidence. All the things you've done before, you use it as a means of building your confidence. And in some interviews, they ask this question directly. And that is what I want us to treat and address today. So today, I want us to look at this question. Um, can you see my screen? What can you see on my screen? What can you see on my screen? How to answer the interview question. What is the question at the top? What is your greatest passion? achievement? Good, achievement. thank you. So you are seeing what I'm seeing. So when you are going for any particular interview, like I told you, when you are writing your CV, your personal statement should have the first line, the first line of your personal statement should have your greatest achievement indicated in that first line. That is if the job you are applying for, if that achievement is relative, is going to be useful for them to consider you. If the job you are applying for does not have anything to do with your greatest achievement, then you don't say it. <laughs> you say your greatest achievement only when it's in line with your previous job. Say, for example, now, um, Mr. Rotimi, your uh -huh. greatest achievement as a previous chief executive officer. You indicate yes. it. Uh, uh, I can put it there. That, uh, I, I the, uh, your, your volume is very low. I don't know what's happening. That to I the, okay, that I pioneered the major achievement was I pioneered the pipeline uh, project for a company okay. and and uh, 
we were given excellence award. The company was given the excellence award because we were able to finish that project at the scheduled time, and uh, we were we were we were you know we were celebrated, and I was okay. the one that championed that thing. Now, you try, in that attempt, what you just did now, uh, I, I will give you sixty percent. Okay, so I should tell. But I should have said my role in that. In that, uh, there, if you say your role, that is good. But the question is that people, you are not in the culture where you did that work. People in this culture, I always say, you must quantify. You must quantify projects. What is the cost? What is the financial outlay? It is the financial outlay of the project that will make the person speaking to you to relate and know that, okay, if you can undo a project to the tune of this amount, that is how they can gauge and assess you. Because anybody can say he's a chief executive officer, do you know that? That's true. I can be chief executive officer of our just only me. I'm one employee, I'm the one employed. <laughs> That's true. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so when they're asking for greatest achievement, you need to ensure that the response captures and your response will make the person speaking to you to know what you have done. And that would help them to know what you can do for them. <clears throat> wow. So for the project you mentioned now, yeah, it's good that you did that project. And again, if you look at it, they'll say, oh, if you are the chief executive officer, what then what is it is your responsibility to start a new project, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It is, it, it is why you're employed. <laughs> it is it's a lot of work. <laughs> to champion a new project, to get a new project, and to get it on. But if you say, my biggest achievement is like as a chief executive officer, I joined the company when the return or when, when the, the yearly income was 20 million pounds. By the time I joined the company, based on my business development strength and capacity, I was able to win a new pipeline project for the company. And that project was done and delivered to time. In fact, we got an award. But more importantly, I was able to increase the quality and the income of the company from 20 million pounds to 500 million pounds. Can you see my response compared to your own response? Yes. So it's more, <laughs> it's more in depth. Ah, yeah, you, need to, you need to ensure that you, you are articulating the value you carry. Yes. You are saying what you did in concrete terms. And when it comes to achievement, your achievement must stand out for them to know that, oh, you are the best candidate for the job. Okay. okay. So let me ask, uh, I think Zenab is here. What is your biggest achievement in your career? Um, I may not be able to give it in um, pounds now, but yeah. if, uh, if you permit me to say it in, well, in dollars. Yeah. In dollars, okay, go ahead. Go ahead okay. in dollars. In dollars is go ahead in dollars. Yeah, um, my biggest achievement while I was working in first bank previously was um I was made the business manager and as at that time the balance sheet was about um six billion naira. Mm. And then we're giving a target to you know increase it to about ten billion naira um i was able to reactivate an account who also you know gave us about 2.5 million dollars which okay. helped us to you know increase the balance sheet above the expected target and then we're running at um, a profit of over um 750 million 
which and okay. before then our profit was supposed to be about 620 million so we're able to you know grow the profit we're running at over 150 percent achievement of what um the target was as at that year that's okay. the year 2021 yes okay well be, you 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 because I've used Mr. Ruti as an example, so you <laughs> no, I actually no actually have um an idea of that. Actually, there were even two different accounts, but you know uh, this this would actually ring a bell because as at then, you know, they even brought it down that um because of the exchange rate, um we may not be able to get our scores, but we we're able to fight for that anyway. And then, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. So now the, the reason, why, why is it that you must, you must always remember your biggest achievements? Because mm -hmm. at any point when you are changing job, transiting between job, looking for a job, your morale is deflated. You are not sure. You don't have confidence. And remembering your greatest achievement is a cr critical and a good strategy that helps you to keep your heads high. Like I was telling this person, I told him, I said, because you are going to, because the people you are going to be talking to are, that I'll be interviewing for interviewing you, they are people of, they are Caucasians, they are from, they are white. It's as if you are feeling, you are fidgeting, you are, you are, you are rambling. I said, wake up, go back to your greatest achievement. Remember the things you've done before. Let the things you've done before wake you up, make you know that ah, I've got stuff. I, I've done things before. I can do it again. And that is why it's important for you to know how to answer this question, what is your greatest achievement? They, in an interview, they might not even ask about your greatest achievement as a question. But you must, you must find a way of rubbing it in on the interviewees. You must, <coughs> your interviewers, you must find a way of articulating and pushing that, hey, I am the best candidate among all, even if you have one million people here, I am the best candidate. That is if you don't have somebody else who has brought in over two, over $2.5 million. <laughs> I've <been> enough. <laughs> yes, but you know, that's banking. Uh, well, that, that's that. banking. And you guys in banking are, yeah, are making money. I was listening earlier that um, UBA group made, for, is it 1.4 trillion naira? I said, so we are making that's money. That's a combination of all the branches, you know. Oh, but but for to make one for something trillion in an economy where people are saying it's not good and people are dark buying, don't you think there's there's a problem? <laughs> They've broken <laughs> our necks before they do that. <laughs> <laughs> they would have pushed you, they would have done a lot of push. Sleepless nights, yeah, and a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the point is always. Remember, what is your greatest achievement? Um, Sister Folu, are you still there? I know I saw you coming earlier. Are you still there, Sister Folu? Or you at, or you at work? I think she's at work. Okay. So, like every other question we've been talking about, <clears throat> when they ask you a question, any question at interview, you must be able to articulate, articulate your response. And all these frameworks, like you know now, we've done about nine, I think this should be the 10th framework. QKS. PD, QKSPD. When they ask you what is your greatest achievement, 
you must be able to introduce yourself, articulate that my critters, part of your achievement is what? Your qualifications, the qualifications you have, the certifications mm -hmm. you have made, you know, your contribution to the market, to the industry where you are working currently, you know, those are part of your achievements. Then what your knowledge? You must be able to articulate your knowledge about the companies you've worked for and this company that you're working, you're, that you're going to be working for. You must be able to articulate the, your knowledge about the industry. What do you know about the industry? You must be able to articulate your knowledge of your network, the people you know, the people that are part of the your network, how you are able, your not knowledge, how it helps you to achieve and attain your goal and your desire. You must be able to articulate your knowledge of the product or the service. Your knowledge, a good knowledge of the product or service is a critical thing for you to be able to ach excuse me, achieve whatever goal. For example, Zainab, now I think your knowledge of what was the product and the services of First Bank helped mm -hmm. you to be able to pass that knowledge across to the client and reactivate the bank, uh, the, the account that brought you that. So you must be able to know all this key knowledge. Again, in achieving your greatest, in making your greatest achievement, you must know the skills. What skill sets do you uh, possess? You must be able to, you know, articulate your knowledge as per your skill set. What do you, what skills do you have? Is it your personal philosophy that uh, my personal philosophy is that there's the biggest room in the world is the is the room for improvement. I believe in improvement. I believe in improving processes. I believe in you know uh, moving people. I believe in I'm I'm always good at futuristic thinking. I'm always good at adaptability. I'm quick to adapt. I'm good at goal. I'm very goal oriented, task and goal oriented. Give me a task. I will go for it. I will attain it. I will achieve it. I will surpass it. I'm also good at leadership. Um, so you, depending on what role you are applying for, you need to articulate the skills you have that helped you to achieve what you are aiming for. And like every other framework which I've brought before you, the heart and the key response for this question is number four, is the fourth column, which is the performance. What did you do? What did you achieve? What did you perform? What was it that you performed? So, and in that place, you need to highlight two or more examples, if time permits. One will, be do, uh, will do two or more of your best performance in your career. What was your best performance in your career? And I said, show don't forget, show, not tell. Show. Show. How you connect to the three Fs. Yeah, what is the three Fs? I think this one goes together. Your feet, your yeah, feet, F-I-T, your so feet to, to the company culture, organizational yeah. culture, your feet yeah, to the, the, the team you're going to be working for. The what, team what, that you're going to be working with, your how you fit that team, and your fit or the kind of persona, personality of a person that would succeed and work in that particular role. You must show how you connect to these three Fs. Your fit to the organization's culture, your fit to the team you're going to be working with, and your fit to the personality type of a person that will succeed in that particular role. And you, then you must tell us, because they're asking you, what is your greatest achievement? Tell us what you did before. Describe the results that made you, that, that made this to be your greatest achievement. How you increased profit, like um, um, Zena just did now, how you increased profit in concrete terms. And it was good you mentioned the numbers, the percentage and make people to know how what you did, how you increased profit, how you improved processes, how you increased the market share, how you save costs, you cut costs, how you saved time 
for production, how you increase visibility for the company, how you help increase uh, client retention. For you now, the now that example you gave is part of client retention. The account was dormant. You 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 reactivated the account. You made sure that the account, the client still remains a you know a client with the company. Okay. How you improved customer mm -hmm. satisfaction. I assume okay. that that account you reactivated it is because the customer is satisfied with your previous experience or previous performance or and the customer because he was he or she was satisfied. That was how he and why he reactivated the account the seemingly dormant account and brought huge amount of money. So I said there, in your performance, demonstrate you are the best candidate. You need to demonstrate you're the best candidate. And the final one in answering this question, you demonstrate, what does that mean? Retell them again and say, the same way I did it for First Bank Nigeria, but I improved and I brought in 2.5 billion, is it, is it a million dollars or so, into an increased profit from by earning of 50 percent the same way if you give me the opportunity i'm going to do it in this same organization i'm going to increase profits i'm going to improve processes i'm going to you know increase visibility whatever it is you did that you you tell them again that i'm going to be able to do it for you again like i did it in my previous employment so, Mr. Rotimi, yeah. so now, do you now see how you need to <laughs> articulate your experience and knowledge? I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, sir. At least I, I, from what uh, the, the other lady spoke, um, that spoke just now, I can see that uh, it won't ask you, apart from uh, showing him uh, real times, you also have to display showcase your, your skill and how yeah. you're going to use it to achieve uh, value for the company yeah. or solve the problem. And so it, it's, it's, it's very important. Okay. Mm. And all, you know, all these, these infographics that I've shared with you, yes, I told you about nine or 10 of them now, yes. you need to know each one of them. Okay. Now, when they're asking you, oh, what tell me about yourself when you go for an interview? Tell me about yourself. Oh, is Q K S A D Q K S A D your qualification? Q -Q. Your exp um, sorry, not Q K Q E is qualification ex experience or exposure, your skills, your achievements, and you demonstrate Kesad. That is for for tell me about yourself. Oh, if they ask you. What is your greatest achievement? Is Q K S P D. In other words, your qualifications, your knowledge, which is K, your skill, what skill do you have that makes you to achieve what you'd achieve and which you are going to use for us here in this company, your performance, and also you demonstrate. Don't finish any interview without or any answer any question without demonstrating it. Relate that question your response, your answer to the company you are interviewing for and say that the way I did it for that company, the same way I'm going to do it for this particular uh, company. So that's what we have today. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's again, we'll, we'll do another one next week, God willing. Um, but you must know what you achieved, what you are able to bring to bear. And like I mentioned to you, on the first line of your CV, you might, let's see if I can even do that. Because this is your greatest achievement. I mentioned to you that you need to... Okay, let's see. Where do we have? You need to... You need to ensure oh. your interview, your CV rather, your CV tells the story.
your CV must tell the story Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can see that. Uh, no. So, wow. Did you say no? Uh, I've seen it now. Just the fonts are very quite tiny. The fonts are tiny. Yeah. What of now? Uh, yes, much better. So, this is a sample CV, and when you talk about the personal statement, this CV is for a chef, somebody who works in a restaurant, in the kitchen, and you need to articulate, like I told you, any job you apply for, the person who is employing you does not know, how can this person help me? So it's your, it's your duty to articulate how you can help the person. And if you're not told the person what you've done before, so, um, Zainab, yes, sir. You, you, the, that story you mentioned, that example you gave is just one. Yes, sir. But you know, the question is, was that the your greatest achievement? Or is there any other story that surpassed that one? Uh, not really surpassed. It's almost the same thing. Uh, it was a new sign-on, and um, we were able to give them a bank guarantee, which is not money, but is I would say is more is that like a contingent liability. It's sometimes they say it's more important than money mm -hmm. for about nine hundred and and twenty three thousand US dollars. Um, it's a light project. Um, for distribution companies, although they have a lot of contractors, but um, one of the contractors were able to sign on and initially it looked as if we would not be able to because they have a special way the, the company, that's the principal wanted their, their guarantee to be awarded. Mm. And um, although the bank doesn't do it, we're able to get approval that. to get the the guarantee awarded in the way the principal wanted. And so what you're saying is that you you see that you you brought in nine hundred something US dollars or no it, it wasn't um it wasn't the cash but we're able to what we do is there's something we call a bank guarantee. Mm. It's saying that um like okay Zainab has given um, Samuel a project for instance mm -hmm. and um, Zena believes that Samuel can do that project but Zenab is also going to pay Samuel um, uh, about the project is about nine hundred and twenty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars but um, Zenab is also going to pay Samuel 75 percent of that amount so that he can start the project mm -hmm. now it's not like I don't trust uh, Samuel, but I'm saying mm. that in case something happens, I would need a bank to guarantee me that if Samuel doesn't do that job, I will pay you back the money you gave. Okay. So that's when the bank comes in and say, okay, I'm ready to give on behalf of Samuel and co, I will give a guarantee to Zainab saying that if you do not complete this project according to specification, I mm. will return the money you have paid somewhere to do that project. Mm. Okay. So therefore, uh, the income about, mm. um, if I'm correct, about almost a million dollars. No, that's the total amount of the 
project and the guarantee, but the income on that particular paper I'm giving, the bank is giving to uh, Zainab is yeah. about um, 2.5 million Naira. And it's a flat rate. 2.5 million Naira of dollars? No, that's that's like the income alone on on processing that paper for that company. Oh, so you made 2.5 million Naira income yes. for the By paperwork. By just giving that. Yes. And then uh, they now paid them about 750,000 uh, million Naira. So, and that amount will be in the account for over eight months. So I'm going to make net revenue from funds of over 10 million on that amount okay. before the customer starts using the money. So the income alone on that is exceeds about 15 million. And so 15 million, but I want to know the, because now you, why this is a good story, mm. I have not yet seen or know what is the value, the total okay. income that will come to the bank. Yeah, uh, the total income that will come to the bank, as I said earlier, this one is also dollar. Is it, this is a guarantee, but what, what are you guaranteeing? You are guaranteeing that you're going to make money in the future. No, I am guaranteeing that if, okay, like it's the government now, government has given someone a project to undertake. I understand that aspect. Okay. I know that okay. it's a guarantee that I'm going to give the money if this person does not do this job. Yes, yes. But what is the income that will come to the bank in total because of that guarantee? So it's only the 15. Okay, uh, yes. 15 it's about dollars. the total income that would come to the bank, it will be running into about 25 million naira. Okay, so 25 million naira. So yes. that if it is, 20, okay, 25 million naira, that is yeah. naira. So in that 25 million naira, yes. it in, in this project, is lesser than the two point five million dollars, correct? Uh, yes, it's lesser. Yes. Yeah, because I felt I felt that the two point five million dollars is higher. Is the, is the biggest achievement you've ever had? Ah, uh, you asked for another one. Uh, well, okay, okay. You, sorry, I confused you. I confused you. <laughs> why I'm saying that, and why I why where I was going with that question mm. is that even even at that mm. with the two point Point five million dollars. Yeah. We don't know the worth of what you can do. And that's the point. That's why I'm asking you this question. Because okay. the, the, the personal statement in front of me, mm. which I'm showing you, say an attentive, proactive, ambitious, ambitious. and enthusiastic, enthusiastic. Uh, bank, whatever, 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 yes. with 15 years experience, yes. what is the total amount of account you have handled? That is what will make us to know the value you carry. Oh, I was in mass market, too. so I uh, at my branch alone we have uh, uh about ah. Uh, now hold on, we hold, have on. About... hold on, hold on. This is the mistake I have made it. Everybody makes it. People that come from Nigeria they make it. In this country and anywhere in the world, when they are asking you about specific, when you put about. <laughs> You have destroyed it. You need okay. to be exact. You are an accountant. You are dealing with money. So you can't be about. You can't be approximate. You need to be specific. Okay. So don't use about in talking about the uh, in, in referring to the number of accounts you manage, the amount of money you did. So you need to be exact and specific. So you okay. don't create you don't create a doubt in the mind of the person you are dealing with. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Sorry, I'm attacking you enough today. I mean. No, that's good. It is 1% of what we get when we go for a monthly productivity meeting. So it's not even up. Oh, why you go for a productivity meeting? Yes. They attack you a lot. They didn't come uh, out of that do. place. You come out of that place crying. You can't, you can't cry now. You can't show them weakness. You can't show weakness. You can't. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, the total account I handled was um fifty two thousand accounts for the whole branch, both dormant and active accounts. Okay. 
However, we have um about we have one thousand accounts that are very good, and how we classify this is um, according to income, yearly income, basically. Okay. So, what's the value of this fifty-two thousand? Uh, the value of fifty-two thousand was um ten billion. 10.5 billion dollars or naira naira okay 10.5 billion naira. so if you convert that into pounds mm. that would be ah. i don't let me get my cup sorry excuse me There's a calculator here, okay? Same it. I'll help you. Don't worry. One, two. So. One, two, three. Divided by how much is Naira today? That's um, 5 million 250,000 okay. pounds. Okay. I'm using 2,000 Naira. Okay, okay, five million two fifty. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the reason is that because you need to calculate whatever you have done into this economy for somebody to know what is going to happen, what is going to happen. And like I mentioned, you yeah. can only do this on this on this on an on an um on a a CV that when you are applying for a role in an in a financial institution. Institution. Maybe JP Morgan, maybe okay. any of these investment banks for them to know this is how much. But you cannot be applying for a role in a different industry and be putting that there because that might say, what what does that mean? Exactly. So it must be based on giving like to like of what have you achieved in the <gasps> industry and what are you planning to, where, where you want to enter into to show that. I can deliver in that same environment. I can deliver in that same uh, space. So, like I mentioned to you earlier, even though I mentioned something to you earlier about the thing not flowing, where you are coming from does not have response into this place. Uh, that might not be absolute. That might not be the whole fact. You might also look into uh, investment banks, you might also look into, excuse me, wealth management companies in the UK if you have experience of managing people's wealth or managing money and see if your experience might be what they're looking for. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. So, but before you do that, you must have attuned yourself to the culture, attune yourself to the industry. And like I mentioned, there are 17 questions. Maybe I hand that they will treat that one, but get to that point. 17 questions you need to answer before you go for an interview. Those 17 questions are different from these ones we are looking at. Is it 17 questions or 17 things you need to know that are, you need to know before you go for an interview? Different from these questions that we are, we are, we are treating. So, it's um it's important you know how to craft so putting on your cv your biggest achievement look at this cv now this guy worked 10 years and he has served and produced 1.5 million guests in other words he has produced 1.5 million plates of food that is a massive number isn't it that tells me about oh in my new restaurant, this person will be a good person, a good person to serve, to have. Oh, this person will be a hard worker. Don't forget, chefs, they don't do the work when they are sitting down. They are always on their feet. It means, oh, this person will have stamina to be able to work for me. And that is why you must find a way of communicating the value you carry on your CV for the person who is going to be, you know, in um, give you the job, evaluate 
what you can do and then be able to invite you to come in for an interview. All right, so on that note, I think we've come to the end of today's session. So you, you mentioned that you have an interview. Yes, sir. But um, this is, this with, is um, Red, we, uh, Red Cross. As what? Red what is Cross. the role? Um, yeah. Shop assistant. Okay. If it is shop assistant, you have, you've done customer service now. So you, are, you have yes. all the questions when it comes to customer service. So yes, it's for sir. you to be able to uh, look at the job description. Send me, the, when is the interview? Um, they asked me to pick a date. I've not um, logged in to do that. I'll do that. Um, I was doing a lot of things. So I'll do that. So shop assistant in Aberdeen or? No, um, I think it's either Bankery or Stonehaven because those were the two I, I saw that I applied for. Hmm. Bankery. So how are you going to get there? Hmm. I'll probably be, I'll have to go by a bus. Well, you um, it is a good one. At least um, my suggestion is, is a good one to start, but to quickly look for how to remove the cost of that transportation. That's my yes. um, um, at least that will help you show on your CV that you have UK experience, isn't it? Yes, sir. Which is, a, which is a, 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 a critical requirement that most of these employers are looking for. All right, sir. Thank All right, you. thank you, everyone. Uh, let's just round up. Lord, we thank you for today. We are asking that this knowledge will help your people to interview well and to get the kind of jobs they desire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you again, God willing. Nice. Thank week. you, sir.